our last variable that we're introducing regarding water storage is yield. And so yield is a measure of how fast water can be drawn from a reservoir without basically depleting it. So on average, what is the amount per unit of time that we're able to take out of the reservoir and basically maintain status quo? Because if we're on a consistent basis taking out more than we take than what flows in, then we're eventually going to deplete the reservoir. So we want that to match. We want whatever's coming into the reservoir over an extended period of time to match what we're drawing out. So the calculation for yield is as follows. So first of all, the delta T that's in the denominator here, it's a part of this equation, but we really don't need it. It's just going to be one for our purposes. So I just want us to right off the bat ignore that piece of this equation. This is just if we have multiple periods of time for which we're doing this calculation, which will never be the case for us. So the yield is basically just the average of the cumulative inflows. And so what we see here is that a net monthly inflow, we're just figuring out what's coming in every month. We add all of that up and then we divide by the number of months. It's really that simple. It's just figuring out what is coming into the reservoir on a monthly basis. Not what we're taking out, just what's coming in. Divide that by the number of months, and now we know what our average monthly inflow is, so that's what our average monthly takeout can be, so that we're not, uh, on average, uh, over time, depleting the reservoir. We might take more than what this monthly yield is some months, but then there will be other months that will take out less. So what we have in front of us here is a problem that's going to require us to calculate the yield of a reservoir from some data that we used earlier, and then use that to answer a subsequent question, for which there isn't a direct formula, but like some of the, our other work in other chapters, we're going to have to piece it together based on the given information and the units of what's being asked of us, and try to navigate our way through it. So the first thing that we're asked to do is to estimate what the yield of a reservoir is using the historical data from the previous example. So, of course, this would be done over a longer period of time, but we're just using this limited data to not overwhelm ourselves. So I'm going back to this inflow right here, because again, yield is based on the inflow, so we can figure out what that is going, what that is on a monthly basis, so that should be on average what we're taking out. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of those numbers together, so that's this part of our formula here. So I'm going to have from that table 2.36 plus 2.49 plus 1.66 plus uh, 4.25 plus 4.92 plus 3.16. So I'm adding all of those inflows together. And then I'm going to divide that by 6, or multiply by 1, 6. So I'm finding the sum of all my inflows, dividing by the number of months we're looking at. And so then eventually we end up with an average here of 3.14. Now we should note that that was all times 10 to the 9th. So 3.14 billion cubic feet, and that is per month. So remember, we're dividing, uh, multiplying by that 1 6, which is 1 over the number of months. So that is our average monthly inflow. So that's the yield of this reservoir. So if we're taking out that much on a monthly basis, then we're not depleting it, uh, even though some months we might take out more, some months we might take out less. But on average, this is what we can take. But that's not the solution to this question. We're told that on a per capita basis, that means like on a per person basis, water usage is 69.3 gallons per day. Now that may seem like a lot, but that's including everything for this particular community. Industrial use, residential use, irrigation for lawns, pools, you name it. So we've got this 69.3 gallons per day per customer. So really the units on that are 63.9 gallons per day, per customer. And so we're then asked, uh, what is the estimated number of individual consumers, customers, that can be serviced by this reservoir if we're going to limit ourselves to a monthly drawdown, the yield of 3.14 
billion cubic feet per month. So this is really kind of a dimensional analysis question that we've got to work with. So we start off with this 63.9 gallons per day per customer. And so I need to start to convert to units that line up with this guy right here. Because eventually I want to end up with a number of customers. So I need to get these dimensions here, this 63.9 gallons per day, into feet per cubic month. I need to get these numbers to line up because then I can divide my yield by the consumption per uh, customer per day, uh, or uh, consumption per customer, and then I can figure out how many customers I can serve. So I'm going to take this 63.9 gallons per day. I'm just going to forget about the customer part of it for now. And now I'm just going to convert it to cubic feet per month. And so for the number of days, yes, it's an irregular number, but we can go ahead and use the average of 30 days per one month. So that gets me to months like I need to have in my yield number here. And now I need to go from gallons to cubic feet. And so for that, I'm just going to need to look up that number and so it turns out that it's 0.134 cubic feet per one gallon. And so that will take care of that. And so if I multiply that out, I find that I'm looking at a number of 279 cubic feet per month per customer. And so now, with the yield of 3.14 billion cubic feet, that's what I can draw from my reservoir without depleting it over this six month period of time. If I then divide that by the per customer amount, so basically my cubic feet per month are going to cancel each other out. I've got the customer uh, unit in the bottom of the bottom, so that's going to end up in the numerator. So if I divide those two quantities, I end up with my total number of customers that this reservoir can support which is 1.3 times 10 to the seventh customers. Or in a number that, uh, let's make sure that looks like customers, in a, in a more uh, relevant term, we can say that's 11,300,000 people that can be supported by this reservoir. That's a big reservoir. So again, yield, we calculated that, but then it was a matter of trying to figure out how we're going to use that number to figure out the number of people that can be supported. So we needed to convert our gallons per day estimate per person into like units of feet per month so that when we divide those two quantities, we end up figuring out how many total people can be supported by this reservoir.